Hello um, and welcome to the uh, Sony Home Cinema product launch. Uh, we are very excited to take you through the new era of Sony uh, Home Cinema today. Uh, I'm Anna Tan, I'm the product manager for Large Display Solutions. Um, I have with me uh, Mike Bromley, who is the tech expert for Home Cinema for Large Solutions. Um, the presentation will be four to five minutes followed by a Q&A. If I could ask you to um, please log on to your Google accounts uh, to post your questions and uh, in this YouTube session, and we will answer that in our Q&A session. Uh, so it's been a big uh, 12 months, two years on, and COVID is still impacting on many other things we do and buy. On top of the all um, the human toll of the pandemic, um, it continues to create challenges in our supply and logistics, both locally and uh, abroad. Um, it's also massively impacted on how people consume content. Um, there's so much more video on demand content and services with a lot more competition now. Um, so it's been a challenging year, um, but at Sony Displays, we've been more busier than and active than ever. Um, at CES in January, uh, we launched our new Q dot um, OLED and Mili OLEDs um, in our Bravia TV range. Um, these new TVs, as well as um, the products that we'll talk about today, means that you have access to um, premium 4K displays, sizes from 32 all the way up to 100 inch for TV and for um, large size projectors. For larger size screens, you have projectors that, that cover that. Um, the new projectors that we are launching today um, have to deal with a lot wider uh, content range um, and for a wider range of um, source devices in different solutions and um, dynamic ranges than ever before. Um, so let's begin. And thanks, Anna. Um, ooh, sorry, guys, I've uh, technically inept. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Mike Bromley. I'm the uh, I'm business development manager for Sony, and uh, was responsible for launching the first 4K projector back some some ten years ago here in Australia. Today, we're in the Audio Active showroom here in Melbourne. Um, I have a couple of guests behind me um the new vw 5000 and vw 7000 and we'll talk about those obviously in a lot of depth it has been a challenging year and i hope uh, everyone across australia and new zealand is doing well and uh yeah we find you in good health um uh these new projectors are definitely uh, a, a real change from uh, and a new era in uh, in in our projectors I and mean, it's always really good to talk about um eras and where we've come from at the start of these. And it, this year embarks on our 50th year of making home cinema projections or projectors. Um, you know, uh, we, we've done the Rear Pro, we've done three uh, LCD. We brought out our first 4K projector. So, well, 2007 was the first 4K projector. I launched the VW 1100 here in Australia back in 2011, and our first laser projector was back in uh, 2013. Last year, we brought out the, you know, absolutely stunning GTZ 380. And this year we get the honor, or I get the honor anyway, of launching into the Australian New Zealand market, the new VPL XW 7000 and the VPL XW 5000. The XW 7000 is 3,200 lumens and the XW 5000 is 2,000 lumens. And we'll talk about all of these products in more detail. These are a significant change from previous projectors. These are everything about these projectors is is completely brand new. You know, from the optical blocks to the lenses to the unique design and just to touch on the design as we start, you know, this is the first thing you'll notice and your customers will notice when you open up the projectors, but these are the most compact native 4K projectors in the world. Um, when we talk about native, we talk about native resolutions. There's no pixel trickery, no, um, you know, 
uh, phonus, you know, there's exactly 8.1 million pixels on these um, panels. In these projectors, there's uh, three RGB panels. So the new chassis design really is a, a, a standout. And the new VW5000 comes in both black and white. Um, you know, quite a stunning uh, and attractive projector to look at. And the XW7000 comes uh, locally just in black. They are a lot smaller than our previous models. So the you using the VW790 as a basis, the replacement or the you know similar model, I guess, if you will, in the range, the XW7000 is a whopping six kilos lighter. And the XW5000 is, you know, seven, uh, seven kilos lighter. So these are really a lot, a lot more uh, physically compact than, um, than the previous laser projectors and really go to show, you know, that these are not just uh, pretty and attractive products, but have been completely redesigned for more modern content and more, um, more flexible user, uh, user cases. So we've crammed these with a lot of new technology. No, it's not just... Um, um, you know, well, there's a lot to talk about, so I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off. So the value proposition here is to produce extreme clarity, to expand our dynamic range, and obviously the challenges that come along with HDR and the different dynamic range uh, options, and to expand the color volume. Um, but as I go, though, please, um, please, uh, um, you know, ask questions as we go. At the end, we'll uh, um, uh, we will answer all your questions as best we can. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, log in and ask questions. So extreme clarity, expanded dynamic range and expanded color were the kind of key value propositions from the engineering team to develop these projectors. And this development started some time ago, well before the COVID pandemic that we're in now, but obviously with a view to, you know, supporting a lot of the new streaming kind of applications and solutions. You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a consumer as well. I go to my local JB Hi-Fi to buy 4K content. And, you know, what I've seen over the last you know, three years is that 4K content uh, disc-wise getting much, much smaller. You know, they haven't expanded it with new content. It's it's actually crept in at my, at my local one. And, and obviously that's, you know, effectively being replaced by, you know, the video on demand type solutions. So the projectors have to handle vastly different content than they've ever been uh, handled, whether they've ever had to handle before, as you would know. So the value propositions for those, to get there, we've re engineered our SXRD panels and we've now got the world's smallest 0.61 inch native 4k panel we've completely overhauled the optical block and you know it's creating a much wider dynamic range now with uh, some new changes to the technology with an optical block um, that we, we're seeing for the first time we're introducing from our high-end range the x1 ultimate for projector which was uh, showcased last year in our gtz 380 and is a real game changer for these particular projectors uh, Tri-Luminous Pro, we've increased our pencil case size to have more colours in our Derwent pencil cases to mean that we have more reds, greens and blues to play with now and give you a much more vibrant colour within these projectors. And we've introduced some new lenses, some new lenses that, you know, firmly focus on 4K and pro these particular projectors um, and give them an advantage over other uh, products in the market and, and, and certainly previous incarnations of our products. So the world's smallest 0.61 native 4K SXRD panel. If you know what SXRD is, it's a reflective style display. Um, in all Sony projectors, we have three RGB ones. To get that extreme clarity, we the micro manufacturing to make this uh, panel smaller has improved dramatically. And we're now able to cram 8.3 million pixels on a 0.61 inch panel. To give you some idea, the previous panel is 0.74, so it's a lot smaller. The expanded dynamic range comes through this new panel technology, which has much higher reflectance and is a flatter reflective, reflective surface. So we get much more control, more accuracy in color, and more uh, uh, increased contrast. The expanded color volume again comes from this improved panel, or panel and the panel driving technology, which enables us to have much finer color reproduction and improve gradation um, in content as well. So absolutely, the panel is a really big shift in uh, technology for us and a bit of a shift away from what we've been doing. You know, previously, we were all about 17.9 and our cinema expertise in our projectors back to that heritage 2007 is when we first brought out our first 4K cinema projector. You know, some time ago, a few years ago, uh, a little bit again before the pandemic, we disbanded our DCI projector um, uh, manufacturing and this projector goes towards what that content that your customer will see rather than 16.9 uh, 4K UHD uh, resolution. So definitely a little bit of a change for us and something to be noted. 
wider dynamic range optics so obviously with a smaller panel we can get a smaller sh chassis so um uh, the optics within the pathway have actually got more finite and smaller the high density laser diodes come from our long you know we're in eight or nine generation laser here now it's not new to us and uh we had a bit of a time to play with it and get it better and better and better and these projectors take advantage of some of that dynamic nature of those high density laser diodes you know we don't rely on one laser there's a cluster of laser in each of these projectors new light source cooling system allows the projector to get physically smaller um, and also makes them a lot quieter. And uh, although these ones are although these ones are not on at the moment, they are certainly a lot quieter. And a new optical system with higher reflectance, reflectance and uniform polarization gives us, you know, a, again a wider or well, all adds up to giving us a wider dynamic range to play with. <sighs> We've also added in the X1 Ultimate for projector, and even though I said that the uh, the uh, uh, the SXID panels were certainly um, you know the, the big change, this has actually made these projectors pop and sing. Uh, and you know I was a little bit staggered by the image quality coming out of both projectors the first time I ever played with them. Um, you know X1 Ultimate. Um, is a rule about extreme clarity and expanded dynamic range. So extreme clarity is through our object-based super resolution. There's a dual data-based process in which we'll go through in a little bit more depth and digital focus optimizer. And the expanded dynamic range comes again from object-based HDR remastering and dynamic HDR enhancer. Um, this processor is almost three times more powerful than the previous X1 processor in the Z. Uh, F, uh, I'm going to get these part numbers mixed up until I get used to them a little bit, so bear with me. And it's something you'll probably have a few challenges with as well. But the old VW 790 and 890 and 290 and 590, I've got all those out of, out of kilter. But uh, this new processor is almost three times more powerful than that processing. And that speaks, again, to having to manage new content sources, content solutions, you know, from different streaming um, services particularly. Object-based super resolution is something that the 380 got to take advantage of, and it really identifies by frame um, images within the screen and treats them slightly differently. And one of the things I noticed with the new projectors is it really does highlight individual items and focus them up and cleans them up and sharpens them. So you, you will experience that and hopefully customers as well. But object super-based resolution is certainly something that um, helps in that um, sharpening of images. The dual database processing um, has one database purely to clean up noise. Again, speaking to that streaming customer or content um, from a lower resolution. And one for um, and so one for cleaning up um, noise and one for cleaning up the pictures. So one one's looking at noise reduction, pulling out you know um, noise within you know like in, as the example here in blue sparings or you know uh, larger images, and one for uh, upscaling content that it knows should look a little bit better. And that database comes from used to be twelve years. It's about sixteen years of um, of data mapping and and uh, a pixel mapping within Sony Pictures. So a very complex system that's looking at reducing noise and also scaling and improving the quality of the image. Again, speaking to where content comes from. Focus Optimizer just looks at the corners of the image and helps uh, digitally correct the corners. So we should have edge to edge sharpness. Uh, it shouldn't be a whole lot of softening as we move away from the middle of the image. And uh, again, uh, a technology that's filtered down from our simulation and planetarium projectors, where if you have many projectors in a, in a in an installation, the center might be the top right-hand corner, as an example. So it really speaks to you know using some commercial applications in a residential in installation to help improve the performance of the projector. Object-based HDR remastering just looks at, again, by frame, the, pic the picture looks at the color within the picture and is making an assessment on how it should treat that, 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 uh, that particular part of the image. So again, a uh, technology that's filtered down from our Bravia technology Dynamic HDR Enhancer has been in our projectors now for well this year and last year, and so it certainly is something that you can um, you probably have some experience with. Won't spend a lot of time with this particular area, but it's really um, how our projectors tone map and how they look at um, I guess the challenges within a projector, with particularly with um, low luminance. You know, TVs are getting brighter, but projectors certainly are getting a little bit brighter. But we're never going to have a, a thousand lumen uh, projector in these price ranges. There's some limitations within projectors, and we're dealing with um, you know content content that's really made for a, a thousand nit, four thousand nit TV, which is you know obviously ha throws up a few challenges from time to time. So um, we will kick on. 
So we've added a dynamic HDR enhancer and object-based HDR remastering, and effectively we get a much uh, image that's a much more lively, more bright, and um, you know a, a more stunning and lifelike image, and rather than that flat um, uh, uh, contrast enhancer that we had in previous models. So definitely a massive step up from the previous model, but the original contrast enhancer massively, uh, hugely changed. Triluminous Pro um, is, uh, again, I talk about it pencils. It means we have much more color to play with it within the projector and the way the projector handles color. Um, the XW series projectors offer 95% um, of DCI-P3 at full color brightness. We, we you know, the, the challenge with getting full DCI-P3 color is uh, typically we need a filter, we lose luminance. We're quite happy to, you know, maybe not use the filter and keep it 95%, which is, you know, pretty similar to the color volume of a of a, of a, a residential OLED. So the massive amount of color here without the sacrifice, without sacrificing a lot of color. So to get some first impressions, we've asked Bruce Tubak from Audio Active. I did say before we were in their showroom here in Melbourne, and Bruce has had an opportunity to now see these projectors over about a week and, and was the first person to play with them while I was on holiday. So um, I'll hand you back over to Bruce and Anna to have a chat. Hi, Bruce. Thanks for joining us Hi, today. Um, just, I guess, the first question is, what do you think about the new look? Well, I suppose we were lucky enough to get them out of the box, Anna, and uh, very quietly over here. Look, when we took them out of the box, it was a total change. It was a total change from the style of the unit, from the old unit. Um, definitely the footprint, as Mike said, you know, it's become smaller and lighter. But the new style is much more, a bit more contemporary than what the old style was. Uh, it makes the old style look a little bit Avis-ish compared to the, the new projectors. So we much be seeing them fitting into more locations rather than just a dark cinema much we see them more opportunity to sitting into living rooms and controlled lighting spaces that will give us an opportunity to play so they look they look, look really great they do they look unreal um so walk me through the setup process well getting two out of the box was um quite interesting look whilst the 7000 es was very familiar uh, with the outgoing range so um, the guys would be very familiar with this, the menu setup. All the menu setup stays the same on both of these projectors, so it was quite simple. Um, but when it came to the 5000 ES, this was even simpler. Like the, the new manual focus and screen positioning setup um, was much to be outstanding. And I must say, I, I literally took it out of the box and in two minutes had a setup on the screen. So it was quick and easy. Um, it was easy to focus, easy to fit. And we're going, the installer's going to find this a lot easier to install for longer term. So Great. a lot quicker. So um, what was your first impression of the picture quality out of the box? Well, I suppose, you know, first impressions are always interesting, but when I first put these on, I did notice one thing, that the whites were really white and the blacks were really black. I suppose this gave us a better um, image depth of what we were seeing. It was something we seem familiar and we're lucky enough to have a GTZ in our theatre. So we would actually start doing comparisons between a much much smaller projector to a larger one. Um, but obviously the brighter output was a key point, but what we did notice was that the X1 processor, you know, definitely made a change to the whole thing. So we, we see this really as a major step up from the old series. So that's yep. fantastic. Great, thank Thanks, you guys. for that. And technology, who would have thought? Um, Cool, let me find the screen that I want to use. Great. So thanks, Bruce and Anna. Um, it is good to get some first impressions. You know, we we did get these projectors into Australia um, a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, the guys at Audio Active have had a opportunity to have a had a play with them and set them up in their in their stunning experience center. And if you haven't been to here uh, to this experience center, um, it's well worth the trip to Melbourne just to sit here and enjoy. Uh, Spider-Man, which I have had the opportunity to do. So, um, yeah, thanks, Bruce, for your time and uh, your showroom and Anna and uh, Bruce for your little uh, insights there. So, technically, the projectors are far different. You know, we talked about the um, the uh, 4K, also the new SXRD and the new pathway for light. Um, you know, they're really significant changes and the way the projector has to particularly deal with content, um, I think it's it's a real it's a real challenge. Um, and before we go on, to make sure that the projectors can handle what's thrown at them now, and in dynamic range is going to continue to expand. You know, um, you, the challenges for these projectors don't stop now. Um, and then as part of that um, challenge is to try to improve the optical pathway. So we've improved a lot of within the projector, and these are very much new machines. They're not minor changes; completely different. Um, 
projectors from previous uh, incarnations. This is a le- the lens hierarchy with our um, our projectors, and uh, all these projectors are designed purely to uh, and, and with the lenses to purely produce 4K images. So um, GDZ380, it won't go through that too much, but it's been around for a year now. There's one up on the roof here as well if you want to come and have a look at some stage and or bring your customers in to experience it. I know it's a little bit maybe hard from Auckland, guys. Sorry, but, you know, uh, in the guys on the East Coast here in Melbourne do have that um, opportunity to showcase that, cust- uh, that product to their customers. The XW7000 picks up a new uh, lens assembly, the not ARCF, the ACF lens, uh, which is a 13-piece, uh, uh, one one optical resin lens on the front, uh, 12 pieces of glass, and the uh, 5000 picks up a 10-piece, again, optical resin piece on the front and nine pieces of glass. Uh, Aspherical lenses uh, um, give us the wide dispersion glass on the front, and that's something to, to take note of is that um, that aspherical lens comes from our camera manufacturing techniques around uh, improving you know, the sweet spot. So the bigger the aspherical front lens, the wider the sweet spot we're going to get across the image of the screen. Um, really important to note that these are redesigned just for these projectors for the first time. So this advanced crisp focus lens or the ACF lens is a new lens assembly in the 7000. Um, it has a lot of elements that the ARCF lens uh, had previously. So it's an improvement on our previous VW uh, 700 uh, uh, um, uh, projector. Um, uh, 7900, 790, sorry. Um, so uh, uh, improved um, uh, 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 floating focus system in these ones, uh, similar size um, aspherical lens on the front and low, lots of low dispersion glass elements within the projector uh, uh, pathway or optical pathway. Um, you can get a little bit of detail on the on the lenses if we want to, but um, you know, again, these are uh, these lens assemblies work under vacuum. Each uh, each um, little cluster works independently of each to give um, more focus and to move fluidly with content as that content changes and chops. Um, again, a little bit more information on the way these uh, um, aspherical lenses. So, you know, that large aspherical lens is really about creating the biggest sweet spot we can from uh, the, the piece of glass or the resin on the front. Um, and it's uh, a really clear indication of how we deal with optics across all of our portfolio of, of lenses, whether they're camera lenses or projector lenses. There's a lot of uh, science and maths that go into creating these products uh, at, at the right price points. Again, lower dispersion glasses. The, the, the smaller the glass gives us a bit more uh, opportunity to focus the, the um, image. And again, these are these are very technically uh, uh, um, uh, built lenses. Unfortunately, the slide on the XW five thousand lens isn't quite as uh, as uh, as technical. But again, a new lens uh, assembly for the five uh, for the XW five thousand again for resolving four K content. We haven't shoehorned old lenses into these products we have redeveloped and designed each uh, lens assembly for the purpose of resolving 4k and the 5000 also gets a new lens assembly although it's a little bit smaller than the 7000 lens but you're going to hear this a little bit um particularly you know for us it's been in the background since uh cdo i reckon back in san diego about four years ago but imax enhance has sort of been potting around the edges and and if you're uh, if you're streaming with disney um you'll notice that the marvel movies are now streaming as with uh with both dolby vision and imax enha- imax enhanced um imax enhanced is about getting the biggest screen or biggest image possible the biggest punchiest image so it's about image obviously there's a sound element to and scale is really where projectors have a massive advantage over other other display type solutions and so um IMAX isn't really worried about black bars. They want to increase the height of the image. So IMAX enhanced aspect ratio is a new aspect ratio for you guys all playing at home with aspect ratios. Um, and, um, and and IMAX has, uh, I guess, some set preset defined color spaces that they like to play in uh, specifically. So, um, um, you know, these projectors are, are, are certified IMAX enhanced. They uh, They produce an image as IMAX would prefer it to be produced in the scale that they prefer. And, um, you know, again, for those guys who like scope, uh, IMAX uh, typically is not a scope resolution. It's uh, it's closer to 16.9 or 9.1.90 to one uh, resolution. Um, so the um, I guess, um, you know, there's challenges around uh, fitting that into scope type screen solutions. But um, yeah, that's the new challenge. And these projectors certainly stand up to that challenge in terms of supporting the IMAX enhanced um, standard. I'm sure you'll have questions about that. Please ask. 
for those gamers, these projectors are far superior to our uh, previous range, and this is really speaking to the processing in these projectors. Um, I'm not sure how important gaming is in in the premium cinema space. It's probably more important in the in the in the lower end of the market potentially. Um, so gaming monitors, you know, they have really super low latency. We're not suggesting that these projectors have that low latency, but we're talking between sort of 15 and and well, 13 millisecond uh, 2K uh, 120p latency, super super low. So these projectors will handle super low latency across HD and uh, and 4K in uh, HD 120 and 4K 60p. The projectors are, if you're um, wondering, are, are, are only HDMI 2.0B, uh, um, not HDMI 2.1. Uh, I've got lots of opinions on that. Maybe that's a Q&A question. If you have a Q&A question at the end, um, maybe that's a maybe uh, it's a good one to ask. Um, we, we, we've chosen to stick with HDMI 2 uh, for a whole bunch of technical reasons. Um, and, and then, but we've improved the processing and it's all good and well to have HDMI 2.1 or, or, or improved versions of it uh, without improved processing, it means really nothing. So, um, you know, the focus here is on getting uh, better experiences with the technologies that customers will have uh, access to, you know, for the immediate future and ongoing. More brightness. I sort of breezed over it a little bit earlier, but the uh, the five thousand is two thousand lumens, and the seven thousand is uh, three thousand two hundred lumens, which is hugely bright. You know, it allows us to put high brightness model projectors in 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 uh, in new spaces. So with with this XW um, seven thousand, it's sixty percent brighter than the VW seven ninety. Um, we can get two hundred nits on a hundred and fifty inch screen. You know, the significant difference between our previous models and new models, you know, for those guys particularly who calibrate products, um, who want to get the best out of a projector, obviously, uh, you know, speaks volume. So, you know, the, the extra brightness and the high color volume speak to improving, you know, the customer experience and also, um, you know, getting the most out of your projector. And, you know, we're really talking about significant brightness improvements on previous models uh, with both models. The live color enhancer again is a feature that sits only within the XW7000, the, the premium model of these two. And again, it's talking obviously having to do with higher brightness HDR scenes. The uh, enhancer looks at um, improving the HDR experience. So not an SDR feature, but a HDR uh, uh, feature. Uh, HDR and IMAX are both HDR10 variants. Um, so um, this will improve both HDR10 and uh, IMAX enhanced um, content. I think we probably breezed over a little bit, but the the other really big takeout with these projectors, so we've got a new optical block, we've improved our processing, we've improved our lenses, and the next piece of that puzzle is improving our light source. And these projectors are all laser. There is no lamp projectors now in our in our residential home cinema range. These are all all laser projectors. So, um, you know, um, again, using our experience when we launched our laser projectors back in 2013, we've been able to fine tune the um the laser um experience for customers um i had the pleasure of meeting the the engineer who designed the first laser projectors and the story around it is a cracker happy to share that over a glass of wine at some stage in the future uh, apparently that's a that's my my bag anna um so laser projectors um, all of them are laser projectors we use blue lasers yellow phosphor um uh, the blue lasers excite the yellow phosphor which is spinning and it creates a white light output um very similar to how a uhp lamp works the upside of lasers is we have low heat. Um, lasers only cool from the rear. They don't have to uniformly cool around the whole light source. Uh, we get instant on off. Actually, I'll go to the next slide. We talked about that. So, so we get instant on off. Um, uh, we get a consistent brightness. So with a lamp projector, I'm sorry, this slide looks like it's a little bit out of kilter. Um, with a light, with a lamp projector, we get a bell curve kind of drop off from peak brightness to half life or, or, or when it dies. With a laser, we get a constant gradual decline over a period of time that decline is measured um you know really it's it's really a more of a measure of um how you use the projector so if you run the projector in full brightness and it and it and it, it's it's full capacity uh, over twenty thousand hours you would expect to, to get around about half of its uh, brightness if you ran it in a much lower mode over twenty thousand hours you might get 60% or 75%. So it really does matter how the projectors use. How long's 20,000 hours? A lot. So, um, you know, if it was a couple of hours a day, 
you're talking 10, uh, sorry, 20 to 30 years. So it's a really, 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 really long time. Laser is also uh, more or less instant on off. The light source itself is instant. It'll turn on and off immediately. The processes within the projector will take a little bit longer to turn off, you know, cooling and, and those sort of things. But the light source itself is instant. And it's also dynamic. It'll move depending on the scene. So using the, uh, uh, looking at contrast, for example, a dark scene, the projector will dim down and a bright scene, it'll punch back up. And that'll help um, improve the contrast that you're seeing between scenes and also within the scene. And, you know, again, we're talking eight, nine generations here of lasers. So we, we, we have a bit of experience working with this particular platform. So there's a nice sustainability angle now with the new projectors because they are physically smaller, uh, they, they're they 25 cents percent smaller, so they use 25 percent less plastic. No, we, <laughs> a lot more of that plastic is less uh, what they call virgin plastic. It's, it's not, uh, it's, well, quite a lot of it. I think it's around about 70 percent is re recycled plastics. We view, because of, they're physically smaller now, they use less foam packaging. Um, the box size is a lot smaller. They don't have any mercury. That's a big tick. Um, and per lumens, they're 30 percent uh, more efficient than the comparable models from the previous range. So it's a really big uptick in terms of, you know, our footprint and our road to zero. Now, the Australian government might not have a road to zero, but Sony certainly does, and a mandate around how we want to, um, you know, how, how environmentally friendly we would, would like to be. And, and these projectors certainly speak to that. Um, uh, that. So it's a little quicker than uh, 45 minutes, which probably helps everyone, but I'm sure you've got lots of questions. So. So I guess the, the summary is that there's new technologies, the world's smallest 0.61 inch native 4K panel, new wide dynamic optics. We've introduced the X1 uh, Ultimate for projectors, improved our triluminous um, here, new lenses, both the ACF lens for the X, uh, XW7000 and uh, a new lens for the XW5000, uh, IMAX enhanced um, support, more brightness, both projectors are brighter, you know, the XW5000 or more or less is a replacement of the 290 and, uh, you know, it's 33% brighter than the previous model, but it's 2000 lumens. The XW7000 is 60% brighter than the 790 equivalent model. Um, we've got a completely new design. These are stunning looking new projectors. Um, if you can sort of see them behind me. Um, you know, we've created the world's smallest uh, SXRD or uh, liquid crystal and silicon panel, uh, and the world's smallest 4K native projection system. Again, that cosmetic is really stunning. They're all lasers now. No, no lamps, no lamp changes. Um, you know, um, you know, uh, twenty thousand hours of light source really speaks to the way the projector you can be used. Like I said before, um, what I didn't mention before would be around calibration. So um, this consistency uh, in in brightness means that we get a nice gradual drop off. Means that if you calibrate them, they'll stay in that sweet spot for much, much, much longer than than a lamp projector will. And certainly a much more sustainable, environmentally sustainable product uh, as part of our mandate to improve our environmental uh, positioning and also improve, um, um, yeah, our being a good global citizen. So that really wraps up um, the presentation. Um, there's a lot to get through. The projectors will start to become available. I'm sure that's a question, so I'll, I'll leave that. Uh, uh, um, I'll, I'll leave that to um, uh, the Q and A. But um, yeah, really appreciate your time today. These are really, really exciting new products. You know, they really do complement our range of displays. Sony large display solutions. The, the division that meet myself, Anna, Dale in WA, and Daniel in New South Wales work for are really about delivering large display solutions. You know, Anna touched on it before. We have you know panel sizes from 32 up to 100. We have you know, full array local dimming LED, we have mini LED, we have uh, OLED, we have Q dot OLED, uh, standard LCD, and now we have, you know, new um, uh, projectors across a range of different price points that can really fulfill customer requirements. So it is a really exciting time, um, um, you know, getting through the, some of the challenges that the last two, two and a half years have had uh, uh, as we move forward, um, you know, there's a really great opportunity for both yourself and your customers to experience some really ex exceptionally good 4K HDR. Just gonna drop Anna back in here and we'll start to answer some of your Q&A questions. Hi Mike, so I'll just, um, for the first question, um, no filmmaker mode? Yeah, it's, it might need some expansion on that. Um, 
uh, Aiden, I don't, I don't, um, uh, there isn't, there isn't a like, like I guess if you're talking about what the TV um, ranges have, there's no filmmaker mode as such. It's really just an added in uh, IMAX enhanced mode. So, yeah, maybe maybe a little bit more detail, Aiden, on what you're what you're asking there. Yes, this yes yes, got yes. So much like our GTZ 380, which didn't need to do, um, didn't need a filter for full DCI-P3, the new projectors are outputting 95% uh, of um, uh, of uh, DCI-P3 in full brightness. Yeah, and it is a massive step up. Um, is there any iris control? Yeah, that's a good question. In the in the spec and the in the press release, they didn't talk about iris control. I would imagine, I would imagine that there would be iris control in the seven thousand, potentially not the five thousand with its optical block. So let me take that. I'm assuming this is Scott. I'll I'll take that offline and I will get back to you directly on 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 that, mate. I, I the short answer is I don't I don't I don't know. Um, so I'm making an a guess a guesstimate, but yeah, I, I will find out. Yeah, Aiden. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, so we haven't moved. Sorry, yeah, sorry, Aiden. So we haven't. There isn't a filmmaker mode as such, like a TV, like net, a calibrated Netflix mode as such. Um, yeah, um, um, I guess a lot of the work in the background in TV is done at that level, and projectors are a lot you know, more boutique kind of industry. So the flexibility of calibration is greater, um, but no, no calibrated Netflix type mode. Yeah, going to jump to the question from Hollywood. Yeah, so the, the contrast ratio um, on all of these laser projectors, doesn't matter what brand it is, will be infinite. I will get you the, uh, would be infinite to one. I, I, obviously, that's not um, necessarily, uh, I don't know how you prove it, but anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll address it in a different way. But I will find out for that um, that question. Uh, in, in the early piece of the documents, we've got guys that hasn't really um, shared a lot of the, the native contrast ratio. So we'll definitely uh, be able to provide that shortly. When will the stock be available in Australia? How long will the old models continue for? I yeah, it's probably better. One. Yeah, so so the old models are all finished now, and they have been. I mean, obviously the supply chain impact across Australia, and New Zealand, uh, Australia particularly, um, has been quite great. Um, I think for New Zealand customers, there is still some. Uh, you could speak to the guys at Sound Group about supply. In terms of the new products, um, we're really looking at. Um, you know, realistically, uh, May for some small quantities of stock of the 5,000 and then into June and the uh, 7,000 doesn't launch until June anyway. So we're not expecting stock of that until then. It won't be uh, plentiful at the start, guys. So just be mindful to work through um, that with the oil distributor to make sure that you've got um, some accuracy in supply and you'll need to speak to the, either Sound Group in New Zealand or Audio Active here in Australia. Uh, they do. They the um, the um, the uh, the seven thousand has a zoom lens or a motorized lens can do the zoom such as you know the the more manual style sort of the the more um, uh, zooming kind of uh, anamorphic and we also support V stretch for four K on both models so you can use anamorphic lenses uh, with both models. Uh, this wasn't offered to us, mate. It wasn't dropped, so we only. Uh, we only have the 5,000 and 7,000 in this market. Out of the US, it has the 6,000. It's not um, on offer for anywhere else in the world. So it wasn't a, wasn't a choice. Um, would have preferred to have more, but um, or we uh, yeah we didn't get a choice on that on that one. So the, the yeah so the customizable lens. If you're talking just purely zoom, I'm an anamorphic guy. Anamorphic lenses are my preference over over just zooming but yeah both uh the the 7000 can do the zoom has a motorized lens for zooming in and out to support different aspect ratios again like i said before though you're going to have to deal with you know a whole range of new aspect ratios then um, that's a new challenge for all of you to have to deal with um the 5000 is a fixed lens so the 5000 is more or less a 290 if you think of it that way and both of them support v stretch for 4k
Yeah, Ben, the, uh, uh, the filmmaker mode is um, for us. We've we've partnered more with Netflix to calibrate mo- uh, uh, with a Netflix calibrated mode. And all brands call their different modes different things. And filmmaker mode um, for us is a partnership with Netflix. So I, I think that's probably the better way to look at it. Um, yeah, I, I can't speak to what LG and Samsung and other brands do, but certainly ours is our commitment to Netflix. And just on that, I mean, we make uh, Netflix certified cameras our venice cameras venice ones and twos are certified to use uh, and to pro- not use to produce netflix content maybe netflix isn't as relevant as it was as it was, as what it was two weeks ago um hope you don't have shares in them but um um yeah so our commitment really is around netflix and supporting uh, that 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 base but that's also comes from a technical understanding of how the content's produced and made so it's not just from a tv perspective it's from a, a acquisition um, post-production and distribution perspective. So, yeah, that Netflix um, part speaks to us um, probably more. Great. Uh, any, any, any more, more questions? questions? I'm here all day. I can stay all, <laughs> stay here all day. <laughs> really do appreciate everyone coming out. I know it's um, different time zones around Australia and New Zealand, um, um, you know, and um, I know that um, the launch out of Europe is, you know, it's, it's hard to get you guys up at 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. when they launch it overseas. So I do appreciate that some of this information has already trickled into the market. Um, yeah, trying to find the right time to do this. Um, unfortunately, this the morning is the best time for us. So um, it gets us as close to the European and uh, American launches. You know, in the past, we never did this. We sort of waited till the information trickled out and then we got the projector under our arms and carried it around and showed people um, we still want to do that caravan at some point, getting out and showing you guys the new products and how they work. Um, I think the seeing is believing with these projectors. They look uh, simply better than what we've had previously. Um, and, um, yes, definitely getting them out into your hands is an important step. Um, and, you know, be patient while we work through stock as uh, as that improves over the next couple of months. We'll, we'll let you know. So, um, yeah, just, uh, yep, keep feeding questions through. If, if it's not to us right now, you know, you probably have our contact. I can see quite a few people here I've, I've dealt with before. Um, you should know me, hopefully. Uh, and and if, if you can't reach out to us, reach out to your distributor who can help you out with, um, you know, availability and uh, and supply and, and lock you in. So if there's no more questions here today, guys, really, again, appreciate you coming out today or coming in. To this stream today hopefully there was a lot enough substance there'll be information starting to trickle out into the market today press releases product information should be uh available in the next day or two which will come in the form of videos and uh and uh a, a leaflet obviously a lot of things are digital now so that's that helps massively um and again if you've got questions please reach out to myself and uh speak to dale speak to dan all the guys at audio active or the boys over at and boys and girls over at sound group um and yeah really appreciate you all coming in today and have a excellent week rest of your week thank you